Good evening, folks. Nick the Force here. Uh, back out in the shop tonight. Uh, wanted to make a couple videos, more informative videos. Uh, these next couple videos just trying to show some things that may not be shown as much uh, for some of these older saws and neuter saws. Uh, uh, you really kind of need to know what you're doing or what you're uh, what you may be doing to your saws to do these um, these mods. Uh, it's just timing mods, that's all it is. Um, just trying to be a little bit more informative. There are some videos out there, but uh, just want to make it more accessible to anybody. So this is going to be a more condensed version of my uh, point setting video, uh, advancing on the points. So, the easiest saw I have here to show you how to advance points on would be a McCulloch 1010 style. And to give you a quick recap, or a quick explanation on this saw, uh, this block we're going to be working on today, I'm going to put a Colic Pro Mac 55 and a right hand start 1010 body. Uh, I want a right hand start uh, Pro 55. Uh, it's 57 cc versus 54. A little bit uh, higher compression and better port timing. And I just like how Pro 55 runs. This 1010 uh, right hand start needed a rebuild. Uh, so, uh, so. We're just going to advance the timing right off the bat, and I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. So, let me pull y'all on down here. So, here's your points right here. I'm trying to get this where y'all can see it halfway decent. If I stick this in here behind here, that'll help. Okay. Here's your points. I said this is a point style uh, Pro 55. It's an older one, as you... We're just before top dead center now. Now we're at top dead center as suspended over. Points are opening. Coming that down, points close. Pretty simple, right? So these call for 19 thousandths from the factory, I believe. Um, so I usually set them at 18, 19 thousandths. We're going to set this one to 22. Like I said it's just advancing the time a little bit. Some saws like it, some don't. If this runs like crap compared to my other ones, then we'll knock it back down to uh, 20, 21, somewhere in there. But uh, here's how to do it on these saws. So you're gonna take your screwdriver, go back to the highest opening right there. Make sure I'm at the highest. Yep, starts so closed right there. So right in there. Right there's our highest. Take a screwdriver. Go on loosen. Make go ahead to loosen both of them, but keep this one fairly tight. The screw on the bottom. Go ahead and loosen it. See how it closed off right there. Then what you're gonna do, take your billy gauge, stick it off down in here. Like I said, this one is at I'll put it at twenty-two thou. Stick it in there just like so. I'll tighten this on down. There we go. That should hold it. Got it at 22 thou. So now, let's see as she rolls through, make sure she will close. Looks to be closed. Uh, I ain't got my headlamp on me. Let's see. Nope, she's not quite closed yet. So we're gonna have to knock it back down a little bit. Gotta get them points to close. So let me go back to the highest opening. Right there. So 22 was just a touch too big on it. So we will go back down to 21. 21 should be, that'll probably be our upper limit on the points to get it to shut. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, 21's wide. So we will open this guy up again. See it close on down. There we go, right there. Set it at 21 thou.
come back here. Close it off again. Just want to get it where it's not going to. There we go. Now we're closing. So about 21,000 most you can do, at least on this saw that I could do. And she closes all the way through now, I believe. Yeah, she closes. Got a good contact pattern. So that's essentially how you advance. There's one way you can advance these uh, point style ignitions on uh, these saws. I mean, it's the same general concept for most point style ignitions. Uh, some are a little bit different, but that's basically all you have to do is go to where it opens the highest on your factory setting. So that would have been right, right about right there I usually loosen it up to where it shuts grab whatever you want to go to like this one I put uh, two thousandths more into it uh, open the points up stick this in and then torque on that guy again so now what I'm gonna go back to get my screwdriver I'm gonna torque this guy down real good Make sure she won't come loose and torque down this guy real good. And that's it. So now we're opening and closing. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit wider. And to test, um, I will need a coil and a spark plug. Now let me grab that real quick. Now we can test this out because I got the flywheel. I'm gonna do this real quick for y'all. Turn that one's loose. Sorry, I'm literally dismantling this all night. That's it, it's just a right hand start, 10 10. I had this other block laying around, it's a Pro 55 block. You're gonna say, well, you can't do that because this one's keyed on the clutch side. Well, all the key really is doing is keeping the clutch from possibly slipping. What actually really holds it down and keeps it clamped on is how much pressure you put on this nut. So as long as you have it tightened down fairly tight, you shouldn't have an issue. Go grab this guy off of here. Don't wanna lose any of these bits and bobs. Go. There we go. Grab this whole get up. Go ahead, preliminarily sit it on here. Get it started. I want to make this fairly quick. We're already up at eight minutes. I want to keep this under 15, so I'm gonna try to do this quick for y'all. Go. Go. Sorry. Just preliminarily sit there. Put that guy back down. One of those guys there. Had a little dust cover. Put that guy back down. Grab our key. I said we're not messing with the key right now. I'd show y'all that in a different video. Hmm. Wonder if this key's bigger. Ooh, I may not be using this flywheel. She has cracked all the pieces. Plus, it looks like this is a bigger crank than what came on these Pro 55s. Which is odd to me. Yeah, that's 
gonna end up being a bigger crank, I have a feeling. May not be able to do this project. But we may be able to. There we go. Same through this southern. She's not one to go on. Well, it goes on right there pretty smooth, but then she blocks up pretty hard. Let's see. Yeah, should not be going on that hard. Something's funky with this. They change the pitch on these threads. Pretty sure this is supposed to go on the clutch on this one. to go on clutch this should thread on i don't understand why it's not it is getting right there and just stopping it should not do that i mean that's what you get when you're trying to build hybrid saws so this is a Pro 55 in a 1010 automatic case, trying to use the 1010 automatic flywheel. She's going down on there. I don't know why I was being so baggy early. in place just want to make sure this this guy's fully seated before we start really crank it down on it real quick but we at oh man we're already at 13 i'll pause y'all and bring y'all back when i have this set flywheel on and i'll show you if we got compression so i'll see y'all in one second all right guys we're back sorry that took a while i didn't end up having to go through uh, put on a different point plate that I have because the other points uh, were just pulling wore out. Um, could not get spark, could not get spark. Tried different coil, tried the condenser, ended up just being the points. The points were bad. This is a good condenser. I can tell you that for later. I had a different points box and points from it. Actually, from a different Pro 55 that had a bad. Uh, it was locked up. It's got a uh, locked up bearing on the crankshaft. I pulled it apart. The actually, cylinder and everything's in pretty good shape, just dirty. But uh, pulled that point plate off. And now, here, if I can get you in here, I'll show you this guy. Let's see if you can see it. Ooh, popped me right there. Ooh, felt that one. Ah, uh, yeah. Have to get y'all in here a little bit closer. Let's get y'all right up in here. You can see this guy. I should be able to see it at that angle. Pull it a little bit closer here to the edge. Hopefully I don't get shot this time. There it's part. Got a good spark now. And we set it at, ended going out to 21 thousandths. That's where we set it at. Now y'all can't really read that. So next steps are, 
Um, I'm not 100% sure if I'll use this, uh, this flywheel with them cracks on it. I do have this other flywheel that came off of Pro 55. Um, I think I, heck, I even got a coil and everything to go with it as well, actually. Um, but I may end up using this one since, uh, yeah. I may end up using this one just because that one had so many cracks off in it. Um, I'm worried that it may uh, try to come apart. But we may run it. It is smaller and lighter, much lighter. Um, I guess that's what partially what made these 1010 lightweights lightweight because it is physically smaller and lighter. Um, does have a broken fin, which granted this all ain't going to get run that much, but still, it's probably going to get red run fairly hard when I do run it um, and then we're just going to start swapping the body parts onto this motor um, I believe I bought this as a running motor so it should be fine uh, but that's how I guess a more condensed way of uh, and better viewing of how to adjust the points uh, to Sorry, not just advance the points on uh, a point ignition saw. So this is kind of my condensed version. Sorry, I uh, had so much trouble with it. Should have done one on a running saw, but that's all right. Uh, I hope y'all learned something. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the video. And if you don't mind, give me a like, subscribe, and a thumbs up. And I will see y'all on the next one. Thanks, y'all. Hope y'all have a great week. Bye.